The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Welcome everybody. It's so nice to see everybody again. Last weekend I couldn't come. You saw me on the Skype because it was snowing so much in Newbury. I think it was beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, it's gone now. So, uh, but I felt like home in Newbury. Snow. I was looking for getting skis so I can go skiing. Uh, what a beautiful memories it is. It springs back from the childhood and all that. It was really like a winter wonderland there. It's a beautiful place. And uh, talking of which. Um, I don't know if I should announce this, but Newbury, we have raised all the funds now for the building project. Sad, sad, sad. Oh, oh, I should have asked Adrian before I can tell this. <laughs> Adrian is our president. But there's, uh, obviously there's going to be a little bit, little bit more, l more to be do, uh, done, so it's... it's uh, okay, Adrian wants to say something. No, just qualification. We are built, yes. Um, raise enough funds for the, to meet the builder's contractor price. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. The legal term is, the tiger tender term is the contractor price, but there's still some work. All oh, right. Ah, I thought we're done now. <laughs> no, fair enough. Uh, yeah, uh, the, we raised enough. But I mean, it, it's, it, it's a really nice, I mean, it's a, we feel there's going to be a, the gratitude, um, thing this afternoon and it's it's really somebody like it's a it's a, such amazing to be in the uh, you know, same ship same team with Ajahn Pram that uh, we with BSWA and BSV and we have all worked together to uh, raise the funds and obviously a lot of the funds came through Ajahn Pram it's such amazing thing to be in uh, uh, be with this you know with the nice teacher like Ajahn Pram and there's a lot of trust with uh, People trust that we we use the funds correctly, and that's what I think that we had a really big donor here from Australia who pledged dollar to dollar. So whatever dollar was raised, he said I'll donate a dollar, and he 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 really donated a big sum for us. And I think that the, it comes from the trust. It comes from the trust as we do the right thing. As as um as a monk and nun, monks and nuns, we have this uh, one of our big thing in in the training rules. Um, in our Vinaya is that whatever the donor wants us to do with something, they, they donate us something, we have to uh, oblige to that. So um, we we stick with that. We, we're we not going to do something, Some you, you give money to do something else and we we sort of divert it into something else. It's it's not a kind thing to do. We, we have to do, uh, make sure that your money goes as where, it, where it's intended. And I, there's a lot of trust. So. It, there's obviously, like Adrian said, there's still work to be done, so we will announce items we're going to raise. There's going to be source system connections, something boring, things like that. But, I mean, there will be um, um, nice nice projects still coming. So, um, yeah, if you want to donate, yeah, we open. But um, it, it's been amazing. I mean, not just living in the Newbury, it's a beautiful place, but like I said so many times, it's... Uh, it's 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 we need these communities to uh, to support our practice. It's um, it's really difficult to practice by yourself. I um I we were driving here and uh, our driver Richard asking what should I what are you gonna give a talk about and I said I don't know I'm I don't still don't know I'm already talking and I don't know what I'm gonna talk but it seems to be that it's it's gearing towards the gratitude and you know gearing towards the the uh, community so the we need these communities to support our practice and the, even for the buddha the um he always said that you cannot uh, discover these truths by yourself they 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 come from the uh, from the traditions they come from the buddha they were passed down by the the sangha lay people lay men and lay women who practice well and we need to trust on each other that uh, we come to these places and we look kindly to each other on eyes. We we uh, we have gratitude towards the teachings, the 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 teachers. We um, we put effort into this uh, gratitude. We put effort into being a good person. Somebody just asked me this week. 
um, you know, how, how should I practice? How do I become a kind of person? And I th for me, it's quite an obvious answer is that you really have to put the effort in. It doesn't somehow, you know, bestow to you from the skies, from the heavens, that you're going to be a nicer person. No, you have to put the effort in. The Buddha only, you know, pointed the way, the teachers only point the way, you have to do the effort. And it starts from those things like the right speech, right, right actions, right livelihood. And obviously as a monk and nun we have, it's very easy for us because we have a, um, our livelihood is such a, you know, pure way of living. So we have a, it just gives us really nice grounding just to, you know, just to be a monk and nun. And it's a, easy for us to practice. It's, it's a really good, you know, almost like a springboard. But for you, you have to put the effort in every day as well. Obviously, we do as well, but we, we have a really good um, sila we follow already because we have monks and nuns. So you have to put the effort in every day. It's almost like every mind moment. Like I have this, interesting this morning, I have a ton of uh, 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 chatter in my mind. This, uh, you know, Mudito is talking to me all morning. It's getting a bit annoying by now. It's only 9.53 and I'm already tired of Mudito talking to me. And we, once in a while you get this. I, I don't know where it came this morning, but there was this constant talk. You know, I've given this talk by now uh, three times. I didn't, like I said, I didn't plan for what I was going to talk, but my mind just kept raising about, oh, this is a topic I could talk about. This is, and this is completely different now, probably, what I thought three times i given this talk already. This is the, probably the fourth talk this morning. But it's completely different what I thought it's going to be. It, it's never going to go the way you sort of, you know, planned it. What can I do about that inner chatter? We all have it. And once in a while it's really strong. And once in a while you have, you know, it's uh, the doubts are very strong. And you're convincing yourself I shouldn't be doubting. Or, you know, or you feel like a million dollars this morning and it's everything. And you, you, you're talking to everybody in your head like, oh, how could you feel about it? And... Once in a while, you just snap out of it. Hang on, who's talking? Who is this person in my head giving all this chatter? What, how to stop that chatter? The thing is, you're not going to stop it really by force. You're not just going to tell yourself, because it's an interesting thing, because you're having dialogue with yourself, and suddenly you tell yourself, oh, I'm, you know, stop it now. Well, who's telling who to stop? It, it doesn't really work that way. The only thing you can sort of like has one way, if you're smart, there's, there's an interesting story in the, in the, in the suttas. There's like th th uh, different horses, and Ajahn Brahm likes this teaching. There's like this smart horse, not so smart, you know, slightly, slightly silly, stupid horse, and then the really, you know, really, really stupid horse. I usually go in the category of number four. I'm the really, really, really stupid horse where my mind is sort of ru you know, running around like a, uh, like a mad person and giving instruction to myself and thinking, how should I do? Well, let's start from the smart horse for begin. It's this, you know, the simile goes with the smart horse. If, if the, 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 the rider or the, you know, who's following with the cart, it just gives a slight indication it's go one way. You know, the, the horse does that. It only almost has to think about it and the horse obeys your rules, that it, it knows where to go. It's, uh, it, I guess it's, we, we should have these similes now in the modern time. It's like, a, a, it's an automated car. It's just, you know, dust the route, you don't have to worry about it. Well, then there's a, you know, the horse which is not so smart. It's, it's, it, it's, it's not so intuitive. And so it has to see the whip, but it only has to see the shadow of the whip. That is just like the, oh, the, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing exactly the right thing, and it's just she sees the shadow of the whip, and then he knows what to do. Well, then there's a, you know, a horse which is likely, you know, the, now the th fourth one, which is uh, getting a less and less uh, understanding, and it actually has to, you know, the rider has to, you know, tap the horse a little bit. You just tap it with the whip, so it sees the whip, you know, sees the shadow. But then next stage is it has to, the, you know, you have to, you know, tap the horse like, no, you have to go that direction. And then there's the fourth one, which is Mudito's mind. 
um, you have to, you know, you have to whip the horse, a uh, whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, and he still doesn't do what he doesn't know what to do. It just all goes all over the place. Uh, you know, what's the fourth one? You know, how does the? F okay, well, if you start from the good one, so it's it's your mind is like so pure, like you have a really good meditation. And the, even the, you know, your delusions in your mind doesn't come to you. There is no inner chatter. How nice is that? There is no doubt. There is no guilt, self, um, self loathe all those things. But not even those um, great things like you're really uplifted. You feel like a million dollar and, you know, the time just fleets by because you're not being mindful either. Even those things don't really affect your mind. And if you, if you want to direct your mind into calm, the mind just goes there. That's the really intuitive mind. It knows what to do. It goes wherever you direct it. And that's obviously if you get really, really good meditation. Then it's the, you know, the mind which is not so good. It's really, it sees the danger coming. There's uh, the inner doubt, lust, whatever is coming to your mind. It, it's, you can see it coming. There's a shadow coming somewhere in distance. And you said, uh, 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 I shouldn't go there. This, if I follow this path, if I follow this path of self-loathe, doubt, if I follow this path of, you know, lust is coming to my mind, I, I'm going to get drenched into it. I'm going to, you know, the, the, there's this Pali word where you, uh, uh, which I forget now, but the English translation is that you, you are bound by the lust in this into into this world. You are bound the cravings, and that's what keeps us in the samsara. Lust is a wrong world, sure, but but the craving into this world, and that what keeps us going. Obviously, the delusion is the root cause, but the but the um uh, the craving for this world that you want to exist, you want to be a human, this and that that you know bounds us into this existence. Well, that's the second, you know, so your mind is just like, it sees the dangers there and it's just, you, you change the direction. Your mind doesn't go there. That, that's enough. I don't want to go into this path anymore where I'm, I can see suffering coming. Third one is that your mind, you, you have to put up effort. You, you, you're following the normal track. You're going into that way of there is the unwholesome mind states, you know, keep coming and you, you follow the track and you notice that you, you're there already. And it's sort of, it's hard to back up. Now you have to tell the horse, no, 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 tap, 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 tap. Then the fourth, fourth way, your mind is, you're being talking to yourself all morning, like Mudita does. Um, you, you, you have the doubt coming to your mind. It's like, oh, I'm going to give a horrible talk again. People are going to walk out. They, they're going to throw tomatoes at me. Uh, I don't know what can you do. They're never gonna invite me to back to BSV, which is good. I, I don't mind. You know, like, <laughs> what a great thing to you know, being a monk is. It's so good because we cannot be fired. We we don't get paid to begin with. So it's it, you know, you don't invite me. I was like, oh, good. I can sleep in in the Sunday morning. I don't have to do anything. But the um, so that's the mind which is. You are so tired of your 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 minds that that's enough. I don't. I don't I'm been here since six o'clock this morning. I've been talking to myself enough. Enough is enough. And then you get tired. Your mind gets tired because you've been just whipping, 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 and you you hear yourself talking, and you just you know the tiredness is the one which is you give up. Oh, I can't be bothered anymore, and then it disappears. That's it is a one way, but that's the the fourth you know the fourth and the 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 way which is the for a not so smart person who's very stubborn and that's my mind. The only good thing about I can say quite often my mind I can I can easily um, just make fun of myself and it's it's the best way to make fun of yourself because it gives a trust to you you know like oh I don't make fun of other people. I make fun of myself, and that's a, any nobody can come to me afterwards and say, "Oh, Mudita, you shouldn't be making fun of yourself." It's it's always safe to make fun of yourself, and it, 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 that doesn't matter. So I can I can honestly say that my mind is not the best. You basically you should start seeing your mind not as an enemy. It's not you know there's this it's sort of like a popular culture thing that your your mind is your worst enemy. It's a little bit like that sure, but it's not very you're, you're looking your you're not looking your mind very kindly. 
you should like we just started the meta so that you should look everything with kind eyes with you know just with that your mind is the best it is you know there's it's not your fault my mind is partly muddled and it's i noticed that a few days ago i have this um uh stomach problem and i noticed a few days ago my mind started to go really it was we were going we were going well took two of us me and my mind so we were going well into this you know happy land and everything was going well and there was snow and beautiful and you know the birds were singing and the world looked beautiful and then a few days ago my i noticed that my mind started to go really it's like it's it's strange it's like am i going to get sick again and I've noticed that uh, my mind was doing things which were not so wholesome. And I started to ponder, why, why, what's causing this thing? And I started to notice at the same time, my, my stomach again, it's, it's not in a good place. So that's causing my mind to do, you know, to go into certain places. That's causing my mind now to be not so uplifted. I don't feel, you know, very, very high and I don't have a lot of um, positive feelings. I have to obviously try to generate those things. And we're going to talk about it this afternoon. Gratitude is a really good way to do that. Gratitude is really a good, wholesome action to do that. So these things that, like I said, the inner talk and your mind goes into the normal path, you, we find wholesome, ac wholesome ways of directing our minds into you know, generating good mind states. And gratitude is really is a good good way because it's a you know, like to put it like I said, it's a wholesome action. You're not fighting something. The normal way of doing that is that like, you know, like in, in that simile is the whip. You try to whip your mind as if you're gonna, you know, control your mind. I I you feel guilty you feel sad about oh i'm my mind is like this again and you, it's almost like you double down on that you know on that depression or your your feeling of anxiety you, you you make it worse but if you if you can see if you look your mind differently if you if you can have a little bit of distance and generate wholesome qualities like gratitude i have you know my rest of my body is you know fairly okay you look at the it's just the stomach is feeling not not so good now i'm doing the best i can i can you know i can do at the moment is uh, i've been i'm being supported by lovely people all those things wherever you you know you find the gratitude and then whatever follows is good because you are putting wholesome actions uh, the, and you you're following with the wholesome mind state the the problem is, it's a wrong view. We were just listening to um, Ajahn Brahm's talk last night. Uh, we, we get the talks from, uh, from uh, Bodhinyana. And it's obviously, it's the rains retreat time now. And so he's giving the talks for the monks and nuns there. And like people who are staying for three months practice. But the, the problem is, you know, so he was giving this thing where we, we struggle and struggle and struggle and strive. And the Buddha's path is let go. Leave it alone. Don't worry about it. The more you think you're gonna do things, you m you worse you make. You worse you make it. And that's when you're doing a whole, uh, you know, unwholesome action, but one unwholesome mind state. You you almost like fighting this problem. I shouldn't have this chatter mind. I shouldn't have a you know, uh, body which is not healthy. I shouldn't have guilt, doubt, whatever it is. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't. That's that should not. It's a you know. It's already a wrong way of looking at it. And you cannot just like. It's difficult to sort of this. You almost like oh, I can just put it down. It's easy to, easier said than done. So what you do, you do wholesome ways to look at that things. And gratitude is really is a good way to do it. Kindness, meta, have meta towards yourself, your mind states. Really, you know, and it has gotten me really almost this far. Just, just having meta, more and more meta, loving kindness, compassion towards myself. 
really as a monk has taken me this far. It would have been so easy for early years as a monk to disrobe and just go back to the life I, I was used to, busyness, relationships, whatever, you know, was pulling me into back into life. But the kindness of this, like, no, this is good enough. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. I have a good community supporting me. I have good teachers. Those things, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the wholesome effort. Not that I'm fighting those things. I'm trying to push them away. When you pu- try to push something away, I guarantee it, it's going to make it worse. The problem is, Life seems to be quite busy for all of us. Even for me now that the building project is going and I, I don't, somehow I, I generate a lot of business for myself because this project, I'm not sure it's sometimes necessary, but I, it just pulls me along and there's a lot of things like we do the fundraising and obviously it's, it's a wholesome things, but it's difficult for me to, me to just let it go when I go and put the computer down, all my emails are done. I, uh, it's easy for me to keep going, looking at it as like, oh well, we should still maybe. How do we do, how we how do we announce to people that we still have new projects coming? That we need to build the sewer system and the decking and whatever needs to be done still now in the project. It's hard for me to just drop those things. So the inner chatter just comes from the busyness of life. It's normal. But you have to, that's why we have, we, Ajahn Brahm always says, um, uh, not just Ajahn Brahm, but it comes from the suttas. But mi- at that mindfulness comes with wisdom. Again, going back to the, you know, the horses, that if you have a mind which is with wise, you see the thing coming with, you know, with mindfulness. And the wisdom follows all. Oh, I'm going into the wrong track again. I'm following the same old routes I've always followed. What if? Maybe what the you know the Buddha was teaching and the monks keep repeating that you know do it with wisdom. And the wise thing to do is, like I said, compassion, kindness, gratitude. Those are the wholesome way of you know uh, mind states. So. Mindfulness and you know wisdom always hand in hand. So whatever you do, you know you can see. People think mindfulness is this kind of very rigid thing where you you see your mind and you you can as if you can have a distance to your own head. Like like I said, you know, mudita and my mind we going walking walk you know hand in hand in the in in a, in my room and. In my mind is talking to me, and Mudito is trying to push it away. As it, it's it's not that way. You can only sort of re- you you still have to relate to that mind state. But if you relate to that with wholesome, kindly, it tends to disappear, fades away, fades away, fades away, fades away, and it can be done. But I like like I said, you need to put the effort in. It's that mind state is going to follow you all around, everywhere. It's like a bad smell. Everywhere you go, it's, it seems to follow you. But if you l- really put the effort and continuously, it's like an, once in a while, just snap out of it. Oh, the mindfulness kicks in. Yep, what should I be doing? Oh, kind. I have to be kind. My mom always told me, oh, Peter, uh, my uh, battery, be kind, be kind. And you know, as a teenager, you're like, "Yeah, whatever, mom." It doesn't uh, doesn't really register that much. But I can see what that if if I keep keep at it, if I keep at it, it gets better and better. Your mind does get you know gent- more and more gentle. You get and when your mind is calm, gentle, kind, it's calm. Uh, it, the calmness, the this kind of what the Buddha always says that we what we're aiming for. That follows from that. And then it's easy to meditate. And when your mind is calm, you know, kind, then you can, you know, apply the Buddha's teachings. Then you can look at the Buddha's teachings, the higher teachings, like the Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta. Quite often you intellect, you know, you're trying to do it with intellect. But it doesn't really leave 
strong impressions into your mind. If you intellectually analyze something, it, it's, you know those feelings when you, 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 like from the childhood, whenever you or something happened to your life and you have a feeling with memory, it's a strong memory because you have the feeling. It's almost like that smell. The other day we were digging over there in Newbury and there was an excavator there and, you know, it was excavating the ground and there was this, like, the, the smell of diesel fumes and the soil. And it's straight away I just remember my childhood. We used to have a potato farm. The farm is still there. My brother is now uh, taking care of it. And always, uh, you know, the the season comes for the pick up the potatoes and it's it's cold like it is Newbury now. We always we are behind the tractor. My father's driving the tractor. I'm in a in a machine picking up the potatoes. It was a hard yucca. But interestingly, now that I smell that, it brings this kind of nice memories from childhood, that diesel fume and uh, and the the soil. And it's you cannot pretend something out of it. You cannot sort of make up the story about it. It's just this memory comes straight away. Uh, smell is an interesting thing because th those memories you cannot you cannot fake them. They are there or they're not there. Same thing with this um, deep calm states. You cannot fake them. It's almost like you know you have it. When it comes you recognize it. It's not like, am I imagining this? You know, like that smell thing when you smell the grass or something, and it rem or you smell a food and you remember your grandmother, your mother made the food and all that. It comes, the memory comes back to you tch, straight away. It's same with the meditation and with the calm. When the calm mind starts coming down and you see, I can see that. I'm here again. And it brings back you, you're in this same stage, same mind state again. And it's a really beautiful when you can, it's really, it, it's, there's this joy naturally rises from your body. It's amazing, you, you cannot pretend that. Un, but until then, you have to actually put the effort in with mindfully, what should I be doing? Where should I be aiming? Well, you, you've been listening to Buddhist teachings. You, you have to have your aim right. But it starts from the you know, first steps of you know, you're putting the effort on everyday life. And then when you sit down, the mind starts calming down. And you, you have that memory, that smell memory, that memory of your mind where it gets, you know, gets calm and you notice that certain things are happening. Your body maybe disappears. Or you, there's just, you know, happiness starts to rise. N maybe even stronger, rapture starts arising. It, and it feels that maybe it comes from your body or somewhere. And it's an it's amazing feeling when you start recognizing those things. So that's why we don't... It's an unfortunate thing that meditation, it's, it's, it's considered as like a struggle. Last week I, I was reading the newspaper my mom sent. I was interviewed on the local newspaper. And, you know, like, an, and this the interview, I was explaining, you know, like, the, you know, what we do and the headline, what she put there was like, the Mudita chose the, the school of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> the meditation is considered, you know, like, oh, just, you just get bored out of your head. And that's what meditation is. It's struggle, it's strive. You, you fight against your mind. You just sit down there until everything hurts and your mind is so bored. Well, yes, it's Morito's mind. Yeah, quite often, I have to admit. It's, I'm, the, I'm the fourth horse, which is like I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm just like, oh, I've been talking to myself for a week. Give me a break. And then it disappears. Then it starts to fade away. But hopefully, uh, when I, because I'm teaching you, it creates a good memory on my mind. Oh, well, I'm teaching other people. I should be doing it. And hopefully, when you listen to me, you remember as well. Oh, it can be done, and it's like an 
it's an effort, but it's it, it is an effort of wholesomeness. We direct our mind minds into the wholesome way. We look positively. Really, I mean, okay, you but maybe not realistic, but who is? You know, if you look things negatively, is that realism? No. That's not, you know, that's you're not looking the the, uh, the world through the right lenses either. Might as well look through the, you know, the positive eyes. Why not? Why wouldn't we? It's hard, okay? That's the struggle, but if you keep with the struggle, it gets better. And then you start getting into those mind states where it's like, ah. Oh, so nice. Oh, so nice, Mudita is not talking to me anymore. Imagine if I come to your house and I keep following you around. I keep talking, 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 talking. Should I talk about this? What should I? I was like, oh, I should talk about the, this and that. You know, how should we relate to that? Somebody asked me whether I should eat meat or should not eat meat and all that. I keep following you all day long. Ah, uh, you would be pretty tired of of me after after on afternoon, probably by ten o'clock. But that's what you know. Mudita is following me, and you have your own self following yourself. And I know it's happening to you. It's it's just a normal human mind. But that's why we we actually have to find these good good ways of relating to our mind. And the, obviously, it should lead into the meditation, into calmness. And it's a it's a beautiful uh, way of Ajahn Brahm, you know, translates the Pali word, the samadhi, is that calmness. It's not you, we don't we don't concentrate. We don't strive and struggle. We let it go. Don't be the stupid horse who gets tired of yourself. Be the smart horse who puts the right effort in. Very good. All right, I'm tired of myself again. Uh, it's uh, 10, 20. I think we have a little bit of time for questions. So if any questions, if you're not tired of me talking, please. Thanks for your talk. Uh, yeah, no my worries. question is, so well, my experience with meditating, sometimes I have great meditation and then other times I I go, somehow I'm cultivating really negative, mm. terrible things, revengeful things. I think, who the hell is this? Yeah. And, and, and you know, I catch it and I'm saying to myself, okay, come on, it's, it's okay, we, I want to cultivate loving kindness. Yeah. But how do I give myself, send myself loving kindness? I mean, I can go, may I be well, may I be happy. But in the moment when I know I'm just in a dark place, yeah. have you got any suggestions what yeah, you yeah. do? Thank yeah, I, I know it, it is hard, and it's it's the um that's why you, you have to almost have a, like a, a tool pack of things like um think of yourself as like a, a carpenter where you have different tools for different you know times. It's like oh well, meta doesn't seem to work now. When you know the the meta, obviously it's it's a really a beautiful mind state. It's a beautiful, sweet mind state when it comes and when it it's cultivated and it takes you really far into meditation as well. But maybe it doesn't work that moment. Maybe, you know, because it's you... Um, try different things. Th that's why I'm saying with the meta, it doesn't come in that um, that moment. That, uh, so maybe take more something more tangible. And then, like, the gratitude. So just think of your... The, all the things your mom did for you or your grandmother or you, somebody who took care of your life. And it brings, um, the mind softens up. And then you can, you know, the meta is more na comes more naturally. And with the things like, with the meta, you, like I, I know really, really well with those kind of really negative thoughts that, the, or the... Uh, aggressive thoughts come to your, my mind as well and it's it doesn't seem to you cannot like leap from that to the meta so you have to have an object like a beautiful dog or something like a, you know really think of a nice dog you really enjoyed or cat or some a person maybe and then when you can think of that a, you know a, or little baby whatever it is brings kindness into your into your mind 
then you direct it towards yourself and in, in, in those those thoughts you have to create that feeling from somewhere you that's the effort then you you know let's say you know sometimes i think it's like i'm really this aggressive thoughts and all that and then you you think of like oh yeah take a little puppy and i'm gonna kill it yeah and it's like well yeah well yeah. It, it doesn't it's it's interesting your mind is sort of like oh oh that's not very kind and you know oh i'd rather take care of that puppy you know stroke it instead of knifing it and you whatever you know so that kind of way of you you're not artificially trying to create sweetness in your mind you sort of you to um you look at more realistically that you know everybody needs kindness it's it's not that thing you know like oh they abuse me they robbed me and all that and once you keep, if you keep harboring those kind of thoughts that you just have them and you it doesn't lead into your mind into a calm state but if you if you have the opposite of way of thinking that uh you have gratitude towards even those people who have maybe abused you but at least maybe they have some some point they had good bodily actions if they didn't have a good bodily action maybe at least they say some nice words if they didn't never say a nice word maybe they had some calm in their mind some point you you it's like there's a simile in uh the, in in the sutras that it's almost like you have to drink from a puddle and you just keep drinking more and more carefully so you don't mud up the water you have to just suck from the whatever there is in that puddle e- every person has kindness and softness and all that in every mind state there is something which is you, you can find the softness in it so turn those aggressive thoughts into soft states by with some wholesome action but I, I, that's the thing those are those are the moments where you make the kamma at the the mind kamma where you actually it's like oh, i'm here again okay well wisdom should kick in that i shouldn't be fighting it it's not your fault it's just comes who knows where it comes from I, i don't know i seem to think fantasize about finnish winter war about russia and who knows where I, like maybe i i was the soldiers there soldier there and i'm thinking it's like oh yeah we f- we wouldn't won the war and this would happen this and that and i go and it's i for ages i can think about it for some reason i don't know why and but once in a while i just have to sort of snap out of it like hang on that's this not the reality it's past you know wars have been fought okay a lot of people got killed it was really not good thing what happened and you know the the country lost a lot of land and blah 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 if i ke- you know once in a while i just have to snap out of it and just generate another mind state which takes me out of that looping thinking but it, there's nothing wrong if the if you look at your mind and it doesn't seem to go positive way get up do something else do you know do something with your something physically nice and go and water the flowers do this and that look at the sun then sit down again sometimes if you just if you just endure with it you don't get out of that loop sometimes you actually have to get up but so you know, usually it's good to endure a little bit but if it's not going anywhere there's nothing wrong about stopping your meditation do something actually you know actually physically something in our eyes and then you forget about those otherwise you just keep looping there that ah, boy that's me okay okay one more quick question then mm let's take the online question um there's an online question from Beverly so if we act compassionately despite ill will arising in our mind yeah is that insincere and unethical yeah, yeah. yeah. unethical well who cares about what's you know your your mind is your eth- i mean sure your your great come in your mind but okay you, you know if if you don't like what's what's you know unwholesome come sure mind is your you can you, if you have those mind states you know, th- that's and you act you start and you act according then you create karma but if it's just a mind state and you 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 recognize as uh, you know you not act upon it you're not creating is it you know unethically wrong no it's not 
it's you know it's it's not your mind really it's just what happens influences from outside world comes to your mind and you your mind is it's almost like a dream i told somebody this week and I, they thought it was a good way of looking at it it's like <clears throat> like your dreams you had some dreams last night are you going to re- feel guilty about it sure sometimes there's a tinge of you know like oh, you really don't know about it but are you do you own those dreams are they really your dreams it's almost like your your those mind states they're not really yours if you start looking if you have a distance to that problem a little bit put it at the arm's length like Ajahn Brahm says it's 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 just cause and conditions things come to your mind from the previous uh whatever happened it's like the dreams there's nothing unethical about it if you don't act on it if you go and you know you ruminate about a, a person who's abused you and then you go and tell them harsh things you acted upon it then the verbal actions you're creating a lot of bad karma until then I, there is karma there as well but the actions are the what creates the bad karma to like i said you know so it's we have to try the substitution is good that's a good word for this this morning this afternoon we're going to do the um uh, gratitude and that is a substitution for the mind state substitute it it doesn't always work i know but we hit you know keep at it but sometimes just get up uh, enough i'm tired of this stuff can't be watching it anymore but most of the times we just learn because what we practicing it for it's partly the you know death and dying we are practicing for getting sick old death we are practicing for those things if you don't do the practice now when are you going to do it you're going to have oh you know i'm i have to leave this world now and then everybody else is having a, such a great time and i feel so sad about it and i, and I didn't do those good things and blah 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 blah, blah. it's going to follow you but if you can have a you know soft calm mind in that point it really makes a big difference for the next rebirth hopefully you don't even go to the rebirth if you like i said in the end of the metta sutta you know who really has a lot of metta never gets born into this world again but those are those are the moments we have to practice you know towards they will come and when they come you don't fight them you don't fight your sickness your dying your old age um A- anything what comes from the from the samsara i have no idea whether i answered the question but i just said what it comes to my mind but okay very good thank you um now we're going to have lunch sad 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 <laughs>